By the time I was four, five, or six, I was picking it. And I'm... we'd like to accept uh, Dennis's painting by our local artist, Karen Thompson. It is an appreciation of lifetime commitment to the minds and socialism. I think it actually looks like you. We're so proud that you could be with us here today. We'd like to present you these first of all. I think it's vibration by finger. Do you think we should ask Dennis to say a few words? I know that the big meeting is changing. Why do I know? Because I've been stopped 300 times for selfies. <laughs> What's happening to us? <laughs> now, the big meeting has been part of my life because when I left school in 1949, I went down the pit. My father didn't think it was a good idea. I'd, been, I'd won a scholarship to grammar school and all that rubbish. <laughs> and I went down the pit. But I've known ever since that everything that I've done in life has been a tribute to the miners in all the far-flung areas of Britain because I've done every single rally that there could be and I've enjoyed it all. And then they sent me to the Palace of Varieties. <laughs> I had to beat a Labour man who'd left the Tory party. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and so I beat him on the ballot. He worked for the BBC and he was part of the Roy Jenkins mob. Can you remember him? No! Roy Jenkins? Yeah. He says, I leave without wanker. I said, I thought you were taking Mark Wynn with you. <laughs> so when, when the new General Secretary and his new team at Durham said to me a few months ago, we want to make some money, we're going to show your film, it's called The Nature of the Beast. And the Guardian reporter said it was a tender portrait of Skinner. <laughs> but we filled the hall up there. We made 3,000 pounds for the Gala Fund. And that's why they've got a roof over my head today. They've started spending it. But it's been a wonderful time. I first came up here in the early 1950s as a young raw miner. And then in 1978, I was selected to speak with a fellow, do you remember him, called James Callaghan. Boy, he could twist and turn. And that's when I first came. I can't hear what you're saying. Somebody pass him a mic. I hope he's not one of those sea of angry faces that I meet in the House of Commons every time I stand up. Because that's what it's like. But when you come to the big meeting, you're talking to people who by and large have had the same kind of experience as yourself. And that's why it's important. I've listened to all the speeches here today and I have to tell you, 
It's the finest team we've ever had at the big meeting in any year of Vinia. We're not allowed to speak for very long and they'll probably pull the plug on me. But I have to tell you, when I met those people down in outside Parliament the other week campaigning for a payout of the pension, I knew they were right. And that's why I'm pleased a couple of speakers have already referred to it. Jeremy, when you made a decision about education fees, you touched upon a very important strand. Millions of young people decided you were right. That's why you finished up at Glastonbury. That's why they sing songs about you. We want you to do something else now. And that is to take the government on with its miners' pension scheme money. They've already took three and a half billion pound out of the funds. It has to stop. And we have to stop them. The Labour Party should make a statement in a short period following this meeting in which we make it clear that we're not going to allow the Tories to wait until every miner is dead and gone and they pocket the money. We do something now. It began under John Major, do you remember him? The man that had seven peas on his knife. I mean, it takes a clever businessman to do that. But he was the one that privatised, along with the rest of the Tory government, they privatised the coal industry. And the result was they took half of the money from the pension scheme as well. We have to put a stop to it, Jeremy. You have to imagine you're in the lobby with me. <laughs> he always has been, he says. In the, in the old days when we voted against the Libyan intervention and the Afghanistan war and there were only 13 of us and Jeremy was one of them I knew that when he stood for the leadership of the Labour Party he'd win with the masses of voters that were going to take part a man after my own heart I used to say to him in the lobby, why are you voting against the Afghanistan war? And it was always a very long-winded reason. <laughs> it was typical Jeremy. He'd been brought up in a household where his father said, and he was a socialist, do you want to make a contribution, Jeremy? And my father said, who wait in the pit like me, shut your bloody mouth, it's not your turn yet. But we both finished in the same lobby. And that's important. You judge people by what they do in life and not what they say. And this man has been on the right side every single time. I was there when Wilson tried to wipe off the Labour Party debt. And Wilson was a clever man with two firsts at Oxford. But he couldn't write off the debt. And then along came Callaghan and he'd been working for the Inland Revenue and he couldn't pay off the debt. And all the time I sat on that executive and thought, will somebody come along and pay off the debt? <laughs> Blair failed, Brown failed, and then Jeremy won the ballot. And the first thing he did 
was to get rid of the debt of the co-op. We've no longer got that £25 million hanging round our necks. He did it because of the 600,000 members that we had. Suddenly, we had the money to fight and we had the money to pay back the co-op. That's how you judge him. If he can settle the Labour Party's debt, what on earth will he do with the country's debt? Think about it. It's like magic, isn't it? So I want him to start the process today, if he can, to deal with the miners' pension just like he did with student fees. We've got to capture those seats back that we lost in the mining areas. We have to make sure that the miners in Durham and Northumberland and all the rest of it, all those families that had people that work in the pits, we want them to join this happy band here today and vote Labour and get Jeremy into number 10. Even the opinion polls, before I spoke, give him a lead over tedious Teresa. I might get thrown out for that. But she is bloody boring, isn't she? Anyway, there are a lot of things to do and a manifesto to build and today we've had speeches on this platform that have helped to build that manifesto for the future and that's why I'm confident in the future that that man who stood with me in the lobbies might well be in another lobby uh, soon. He'll be leading the party, but he'll be leading it to victory. We'll beat the Tories hands down. We'll beat the Liberal Democrats. We'll beat the Scottish Nationalists. All of them will fall before us. Give your support to Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you very much. We love him. He's part of our roots, our part of our heritage, and he's someone who's promised to cherish our past and help us build our future.